topic uh, which is uh, Microsoft BCDR uh, and and Windows Virtual Desktop. I mean, these two are uh, I mean a pretty vast topic in itself. So uh, uh, let's see. I mean, you know, I'll try to cover as, as much as we can. In fact, this too should be a different topic, but you know, the topic was suggested by someone else, so uh, we need to cover it. Uh, but yeah, I'll try to focus as much as we can. So. Uh, what is uh, uh, so team once again just to confirm you are able to see my screen and you uh, i am audible as well i think chanakya can please confirm that yes yeah, sure we can see your screen and you're okay. audible yep. perfect perfect thank you so much uh, chanakya so guys uh, let's quickly start uh, with a topic of uh, windows uh, i mean uh, bcdr which is business continuity disaster recovery so again, what are we going to cover? Availability on demand. Azure uh, backup, I'll just give you a glimpse. Uh, how to set up uh, DCDR and Windows Virtual Desktop. So as we know, uh, cloud, cloud has been a boom uh, throughout because of availability on demand. So maybe cloud bursting, maybe analytics, maybe dev and test, maybe migration, long-term retention for your backup. Uh, and cloud recovery. These are a few of the features after, I mean, because of which uh, cloud uh, is in demand and will grow with time because everybody in today's world, as we know, data is growing and data will keep on growing in terms of analytics and, and SQL data warehousing and other stuff. So we need something which is available on demand. And this is where cloud comes into picture. But when it comes to business continuity, there are a lot of challenges. When it comes to BCR, when it comes to disaster recovery, there are a lot of challenges what company faces. And what are those challenges? So, <clears throat> sorry about that. One is protecting data and application is complex. Your protection is absolutely complex. Uh, how to protect it, how to replicate it. Uh, too much data, often it's insufficient protection long-term retention you require immense time you invest in media management understanding the plans of uh, decreasing uh, recovery confidence and the cost of course so imagine if you want to take a dr from uh, from dubai to abu dhabi you need to take a site in abu dhabi you need to hire take the hardware you need to take the licenses the security the replication model and other things so bcdr is a must for almost all the organization but there are very few organizations who have it because of the complexity and because of the cost incur what azure has to offer uh, let's let's go in detail what we can do with azure so with azure we can have automating uh, 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 retention policies in terms of your dr we can integrate your solutions with your existing vm for the, for long term data retention we can increase the depth and breadth of protection uh, with time, with respect to time, I mean, there is no media management. It's an automatic backup that you configure and that has been done. And then uh, in terms of, uh, I mean, you know, you can have an implementing a testable solution because we know with Azure, uh, I mean, you can test a solution, you use it, you like it, you keep it, or you don't like it, you turn it back. Cost, absolutely cost effective. Azure, I mean, there is no other DR which is as cost effective as as cloud especially azure because let me give you an example imagine you have two virtual machine on premises maybe one application one sql database an application we know we, we need a high availability with the application now imagine you want to take that application as a dr on cloud you will only replicate the storage so you have two options one is you know you only replicate the storage of the application and uh, once the storage has been replicated to cloud uh, uh, you know a machine will not be provisioned unless and until you do a failover only storage is replicated and only you are charged for the storage after the machine is replicated then is the only time when uh, uh, you know, the storage is uh, replicated. I mean, the machine is created and you pay for that charge. And we will talk about detail uh, in terms of Azure DR. So there are seven tiers of DR when it comes to, you know, uh, on-premises environment. I mean, you know, what type of DR you can have? You get the, I mean, of course, there is no offsite DR. I mean, DR is within the same site. Then uh, the, there's a the data backup, data backup to hot site. Uh, then the, the vault, then the point in time copy. And then is <clears throat> highly automated DR, which is level 7 DR. Azure fits as a level 7 DR. We achieve everything. I mean, automating your replication, uh, a hot backup as a copy, 
planned failover, unplanned failover, test failover, all of these points is achieved when it comes to Azure DR. Uh, so this is the, uh, uh, I mean, RPO and RTO, the retention point object and retention time object that we can achieve in, in terms of Azure DR. So see, there are two types of, there are two types of failover in Azure. So imagine you have, imagine you have uh, uh, on-premises server and every 15 minutes you are replicating to Azure. Now, the first failover is the test where we test where you know your on-premises environment is intact which is fine. Second type of failover is a planned failover. So imagine your on-premises machine goes down and you want to do a failover on cloud, which is absolutely great. So now imagine your replication is every 15 minutes. So you did a failover at 12 and then the next, uh, you did a replication at 12 and the next replication is at 12.15. But at 12.10, you want to do a failover, planned failover, maybe because of uh, uh, you know any updates that you're doing any 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 recovery that you're doing or maybe it can be anything So whenever you're doing it as the last failover was at 12 and now you're failing out at 12 10 as it's a pan failover your connection is not lost between on-premises to azure it will check the replication and it will do a failover again this is what is the planned failover in uh, and there is no data loss in planned failover in unplanned failover Consider the same situation 12 and 12 15 will be the next application if you're doing a 12 10 failover because of hardware failover because of natural disaster something like that then in that time the 10 minutes data will be lost based upon the replication policy that you guys have now uh, what is azure site recovery what we can achieve of course we can achieve recovery recovery to add so recovery you can achieve recovery for uh, uh, so you know so if you have an, an location in dubai and you can have a location in abu dhabi you need some replication object replication service you can use azure site recovery for that as well whereas when you are not replicating to azure but you're using the service for recovery from one side to another side second second is recovery to azure then third is disaster recovery as a service and cloud migration as well with the help of azure site recovery you can do cloud migrations we don't recommend it because microsoft have another tool called as azure migrate but yes you can do migrations as well with azure site recovery what are the options to replicate uh, for, for azure see one is uh, you can replicate on premises from hyper v to hyper v uh, uh, again on premises uh, from hyper v san to hyper v san then you can replicate from hyper v to azure you can replicate from a vmware or physical to the vmware or physical on premises and then you can replicate vmware and physical to azure and you can replicate to azure so uh, this is the situations of uh, on premises uh, there is a very very big catch which i'm going to tell you here you can replicate your physical to azure vmware to azure and hyper v machines to azure but the problem here with physical is once you replicate your physical to azure the fail back will not happen on azure the fail back from azure to on premises will happen on a vmware environment that's why we don't recommend any customer to do a failover uh, i mean a dr of physical servers like once again, if you have a physical server on premises and you want to do a DR on Azure, you can do it. The DR will happen, the machine is created. But as Azure use hypervisor technology, when you want to fail back, when your on-premises physical server is up and running, you cannot fail it back on the same physical server. You need to fail it back on a VMware environment, not even on Hyper-V. And then the second option is uh, you can uh, uh, replicate Azure from uh, one region to one other region, maybe from North Europe of everything, and then you need to replicate it to West Europe. Okay, now uh, this is the options available. Now another option is there is another tool. I mean, you know, a lot of customers, they ask us a question that, you know, if we take a dr on azure how much we're gonna pay how much we're gonna be uh, how much is gonna be your bandwidth how much is gonna be the rto how much is gonna be the rpo and all the other questions this is the snapshot i'm not sure if you guys are able to see it but this is a snapshot of one of the tool called as azure site recovery deployment planner 
you need to run this planner in the customer's environment, run it for maybe one day, two day, or three day. It will do the complete collection, like you know, how many machines are there, if you're able to see my screen, how many machines are compatible, how many machines are incompatible, what is the desired RPO, what what is the bandwidth that you need, how much you're going to pay, and everything in detail. It's, this is an Excel sheet, and it will give you everything in detail. Uh, guys, in terms of demo, as I told you, we didn't have uh, much of the time because Windows Virtual Desktop is another thing that we need to cover. So we will do our demo there. So it's very simple. <coughs> you need to go to the Azure site. I have taken the snapshot. And first of all, you'll create on prepare your infrastructure. As soon as you click on prepare your infrastructure, it will ask you that where is your replicated item? It's, it's on premises where you want to replicate. You want to replicate in Azure. I using Hyper-V or VMware or physical, it says I will use Hyper-V. I using SCVMM. I said no. One more thing, guys, uh, which I wanted to focus here that, you know, uh, uh, Azure DR doesn't, does not need a VPN connection for replication. Azure DR's replication happen over the internet. So even if you don't have replication, I mean, VPN from your on-premises to Azure uh, UAE site, it doesn't matter. Your DR will work. Which will not work is if you want to connect to the virtual machine from on premises, that time you need a VPN connection. So, to give you a better example, imagine you want to do DR for your applications. You don't need a VPN connection because applications over, I mean, if they are connecting over the internet, the user they, they search for https.redinternetgov.com, users are accessing it via uh, the URL. Uh, yeah, our partner is accessing via the URL. So if we have on premises or if we have it on Azure, any features we have on Azure for now. But as an example, uh, it doesn't need a VPN connection. But if you have your domain controller, if you have your file servers, in that case, after failover to connect, you might need a VPN. So once you give all this information, uh, it will ask us uh, what is the source. Source is on premises. Um, where is my source location? It's it's in Dublin. Then. A tool will be downloaded and run on your Hyper-V environment. Once the tool, uh, and it creates a configuration server. Once a configuration server is run, Azure will run and will tell that on that host how many servers are there. And it will give the list of the servers. Now we will check which all servers you need a DR. Once I check on this DR, it will start replicating. And here, enable replication option will be available. And then... <clears throat> Once enabled replication option is there, we will do the failover. As I said, we have test failover, planned failover, unplanned failover, and then fail back. And then while we are failing it back, once you're, so after failover, our machines are created and users, if it's a web server, user will keep on, because see, uh, uh, there will be a lot of questions which we can answer now. You can, we can have a personal discussion. IP addresses, your IP addresses will of course change on Azure, the VM. But if it's a web server, user are connecting over the name, it doesn't matter because users are connecting with the name and the DNS will resolve the name. Second option is uh, what if any other server? See, on your DNS, there will be two records entered with the same server name. So if one is down, it will route the traffic to the other environment, which is up and running. And once you are failing it back, you will see the failback option, which you see here as a failback option will be available. And, and that's your DR it happened. So let's, uh, I mean, let's quickly do a quick demo. If uh, for, for Azure DR, how to configure it. So I will stop this sharing. I'll share another screen. And here uh, I will share my Azure environment. I hope you are able to see my Azure screen. So what I'm going to do is I'll search for Azure Site Recovery here. Azure Site Recovery is basically used for recovery. recovery so for, it is used for backup and it is used for DR. So I said I want to do a DR. I said add a new environment, add. As soon as I click on add, it will ask me to create a resource group. I'll say test. I'll click on OK. Word name test. Click on OK. Region, you choose whichever it is. So this is only creating a recovery service world. It is not doing anything else. It is getting created now. So let's wait for a couple of minutes till the recovery service world is created.
Okay, so as soon as the recovery service vault is created, I will click on backup or DR. I said I'm on DR. And once, so it will ask me that, do you want a DR for Azure VMs, for VMware or Hyper-V? I said Azure VMs. I said enable replication because currently uh, I don't have an on-premises environment. So it says which region, what is the deployment model, resource manager or classic resource manager. What is the source resource group? Maybe I said uh, WVD. Uh, zone disaster recovery, no. I clicked on next. Okay, so as my Azure site recovery is, is in a different region, uh, you know, my, my machines uh, are in different resource group. I have, uh, my machines are in w, uh, Windows Virtual Desktop resource group. So I won't be able to do it here. So let me do this. Let me delete this for now. And I need to create a new resource group, or maybe Azure Site Recovery. I need to create a new site recovery in the same environment, in the same resource group where my existing environment is. So I'll say click create it in the same one. Test. Let me do this again. Again, submitting deployment, it will take maybe a minute uh, to create. Now it's created, I'll go here. Okay, again, recovery, Azure Virtual Machines, enable replication. Now this will ask me, uh, Azure Sponsor Resource Group, no, I'll click on next. Source Resource Group, again, this one. The region uh, so see the problem that i'm facing here is the region currently my machines are in east us and my, i want to do a dr in in another region but as i have created the resource group in same region it's not giving me an option but i won't take my i, I won't be wasting much of my time but this is how you do a dr guys so planned unplanned or failed one this is how you do the dr and this is how you get things started so uh, probably, you know, uh, this is a slide and I will also give you a few reference article where you can refer to do an Azure DR. But the main topic that uh, I wanted to cover was Windows Virtual Desktop, which is really, very hot in the market and uh, which is really, you know, something that we can put some uh, insights to. So let's quickly get started with Windows Virtual Desktop. Give me one quick minute. Let me quickly go to that. Okay, so I will share. So I hope you're able to see my screen, which is uh, Microsoft Windows Virtual Desktop, the WVD. So why people use WVD? People use WVD for mobility because user can access any device anywhere. I mean, of course, after this COVID, I don't have to uh, emphasize much on this point. Security, again, this is not uh need to be much uh focused upon because you know as users are accessing the device from anywhere company needs security that the data doesn't leave the organization the ransomware attack should not be there device should be highly secure highly compliant scalability i mean of course uh user can scale i mean you know you imagine today use five users are connecting to, uh, i mean tomorrow maybe 50 users 100 users may be connecting so it should be scalable environment compatibility it should be absolutely compatible uh, performance should be good management should be very simple and cost at the very top priority which we should have in terms of uh, why people use so we have we, we already had rds uh, for for microsoft but that was not very much famous because we had solutions called as uh, uh, citrix and and vmware horizon was one of the most uh, value added solution in the market but with the new transformation of wvd there is a whole difference in the market which we can see so it gives centralized management it provides desktop as a service remote application access you can do increase security and performance so uh, virtualization help address specific business areas security and regulation elastic workforce specific employees if you want to give wvd and specialized workload so imagine i had worked with a construction company last week 
and they they wanted uh, wvd because you know that they they use autocad and and rivet as uh, their applications which are very very high memory and and you know graphics consuming application and investing on premises was not making sense to them so they took windows virtual desktop with an nce's uh, virtual machine with uh, high graphics uh, intense machines and they got enough absolute performance so workload specific engagement you can do with wvd work is no longer a place absolutely we all know it it may be office it may be home it may be a cafeteria your airport it doesn't matter so desktop as a service market is growing i mean it's i mean this is a 2018 number or a 2019 number but i mean you cannot imagine what is going to be the number of 2020 uh, because of this covid situation but the market is was tremendously going and after this covid we have seen an immense increase in in the demand of das desktop as a service how desktop as a service is different with traditional rds so rds was remote desktop service vd uh, i mean wvd is the uh, the, 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 the the latest version of RDS. So in RDS, <clears throat> you need to manage everything, the entitlement, the broking, the license, the maintenance, and everything was managed by on-premises environment. But in WBD, everything has been managed by the vendor. We, as a customer or a partner, only manage the entitlement for the user and the image, which image needs to be updated, bagged up, secure, and everything else. Uh, this is a short glimpse of that. What was the challenges of uh, WVD uh, before? I mean, customer challenges was client experience was of multi session was not very good. Poor row 365 experience, scalable was a problem, and deploying monitoring was a problem. With WVD, it is the first time when Windows 10 Microsoft introduced with a multi session. Only server was available with multi session, but now also Windows 10 is available as a multi session. Uh, it gives FS Logic as a profile container a whole different experience for, for profiles. Uh, and of course, you can migrate from your existing WVD anytime and you can scale up and scale down within very easily. So what is WVD? <clears throat> it is the Windows 10 uh, multi-session experience. It comes with Office 365 Pro Plus and uh, you can deploy it in minutes so basically you can use your windows 10 and you can use your windows server as well with wvd with windows 10 you can deploy with with rds i mean with office 365 pro plus so your users can access desktop as a service from any device anywhere accessing your wvd url or a shortcut and and they will get the same desktop and feel experience and as wvd is available in ua north then you know there is absolutely no questions of the latency in other areas as well so virtualization host today, uh, we can we can manage with WVD, we can take Windows 10, we can take the single session, multi-session, and uh, <clears throat> these are the options available. Operating system supported, you can take Windows 10, Windows 7. Okay, WVD, uh, also customers are going for WVD, the one who have Windows 7 as a legacy, but their application only support Windows 7, they go to Azure and they get a three-year extended support to Windows 7 or Windows 2008 R2 because, you know, it's on Azure. 2019, 2016, and 2012 R2 is also supported. Uh, I mean, that's fine. <clears throat> so how you can access WD? One is you need to go to the URL and you will get everything that you have. You can map WD to your shortcut menu. So if you see here in the start menu, you have remote desktop service. Eventually this is on cloud, but here you clicks on it and we will configure it with SSO. So they log into the laptop or they log into the iPad. They are logged in and they will get the seamless SSO experience and they can also use it on the mobile device as well. Licensing, very important. If you have any of these licensing, you don't need any additional licenses for WVD for the client OS. If you are using M365, uh, E3, E5, F1, business premium, which is business, is business premium now, and then education and VDA per user line system, you are already covered. If you are using a 2012 R2, or 2016 RDS CALS with SA, even your WVD is covered. You don't need an additional license if you are as well. Uh, now I will go directly to the architecture level. So the top level architecture, which is the, the web access, the diagnostic, the one who have used Citrix or RDS before, everything else is been managed by the vendor, which is Microsoft. The image management, which is the image and everything else, is we manage. 
as a partner as a customer as a distributor and again the hardware is been managed so our management becomes very easy and your headache it's it's compare this with your office 365 on premises exchange versus office 365 our headache becomes i mean you know our management is very easy and we are only focused on the work that we are getting and the high availability that is available what do you need for windows virtual desktop you need an azure subscription you need an azure ad uh, or or adds and then you need an image and you need the required credentials which we will show we'll do a detailed demo of windows virtual desktop by the way guys now uh, we won't go here so let's quickly get into the demo there is a lot of talk so okay i will stop sharing this and i'll share my azure portal and in fact i'll share my computer screen now okay i hope you are able to see this so what i did was so the wwd was with classic and with the new version so what i did was in our case i created a dc a domain controller and i created a vm01 so vm01 is created with the windows virtual desktop uh, provisioning pool that i created so now what i will do is i will log in in the in incognito window and what i will do is i will take all the credentials here i will log in with the user i have created two user user a and user b so my so this is a url so i have created a domain controller on azure as well a dc on azure uh, where i have created couple of users i have not configured sso so you we might need to enter credentials multiple times but i'll tell you what all i have configured i will do i will do my users here i'll go to user a no it is already so let me let me sign in with different user okay One second. Let me open in Chrome the URL because you know it takes the cache credential. I'll open the URL again in Chrome. Okay. I will open Mozilla as well because for the another user and for the application management. So I will access the URL again. and in the in in the chrome incognito window i will put user a and in mozilla's incognito window once it's open i will enter user b's so i only have one vm taking some time so let's go to okay skip for 8 days which is fine let me refresh this mozilla so let me try with another credential control let me delete the history here i'm not sure if it's the same delete delete and delete i have deleted all the history i hope you should be able to access it now okay i will open another window of mozilla i'll cancel this let's close all the tabs i will go to the <clears throat> url so as i told you you can access windows virtual desktop via the url or i can plug in into my uh, start menu here or i can there is a there is a wbd client as well as a receiver in citrix you will get it here okay so let's me quickly go ahead and take user b here this is my mozilla i'll i'll put it user b here my password okay the mfa i will skip it for 9 days so let's go to uh, this thing let's go to See here with user A, I got my WBD machine. I will just click on connect. I will click on allow. As I told you, my MFA is not been enabled, so I need to enter the domain controller's credentials here again. Let me do that. Okay, I will enter my domain controller's. I mean the user's credential for domain control for on-premises AD or or domain controller on cloud, and let this authenticate. 
and this is my machine for user A. See, this is my machine for user A. I can access my Office 365 here. I can access my file share. Although the machine is same, but they will get their Unix CIC here. I have mapped the two uh, one network uh, two network drive for user A. Now let me go to user B. I will go to user B. Let me enter the credentials. We connect now. Let me enter the credentials again. Okay. This is my user B. See, again, I have logged in with user B. I will see all the functionality that we have. Let me to quickly type. Who am I? I'm user B here. And on Chrome, let me check. Okay, here, let me type the command. I'm user A. And if you see in user B, I will get my different map drive. I have only mapped one network drive here, which I will be able to see. Whereas in user A, in, and, and if I go to the management portal, let me quickly go now. There is also a management portal. This is a classic one, by the way, where I will see some management features, which I will show it to you now. Let me quickly browse this. Keep it for eight days. Okay, so my choose my default tenant for management. So let me quickly uh, go ahead and go to the tenant. So this is a tenant that I created. It will show me. So this is uh, my tenant. This is my host pool. I have one VM here. Uh, I can add multiple VMs. I can, I can edit. I can delete. I can restart. I can drain. If I go to user session, it will say that you have two users logged in here. Uh, one second. Let me check how I can. This is an issue with. I think. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you're able to see this. But guys, I have user A and I have uh, user B logged in as well. In session ID 2 and session ID 3, I have user A and user B, the two session IDs. Let me check if I can. Okay, and user sessions, this is where we can let me check this yes this is user a and user b in terms of session id both are having desktop when they want to create it if i want i can i can log them off here i can log them off here and i can log them off from here as well see i logged in off from both of them here and if i go my to my chrome back see i'm signing out automatically so i leave this page uh, even this is signed out i will leave this page as well so guys, that's uh, Windows Virtual Desktop for you all. Uh, uh, do we have any questions? Okay, team, I think uh, that's uh, pretty much it. Thank you so much for your time and, and it's been a pleasure uh, being with you all uh, and we will connect again. Thank you so much.